Have you ever wondered how the internet works in Starfinder? The internet is known as infospheres and there is way more than just one of them. The way that it's laid out for us in Tech Revolutions, I have kind of been doing this in my own games. Some of it I have not been doing and I'm just really glad to have a more concrete answer to how this works. So if you've ever wanted to know how it works, this is how it does do things. This this is how it this is how it works. So if you've ever wanted to know how the infosphere works so you can add it to your games, this video is for you. So what is an infosphere? Well, an infosphere is a network, usually large individual networks that connect together on a planet and you get planet-wide internet. In some very rare cases and very densely populated star systems, you can actually get an infosphere that covers an entire solar system. And while the infosphere is data, it is a digital space, a digital domain, if you will. You can access it through technological means, but you can also access it through magical means as well as biomechanical means. What this means is each planet's internet is different than the next, unless they are connected by a star system connectivity. Generally speaking, if one computer, comm unit, or augmented reality implant can connect to an infosphere, it can connect to all of them. The reason for this is there are fragments of code that can be found in every infosphere that is that is in existence, and this code is the same. Engineers from all over everywhere have been able to at least agree on the fact that there was at one point a universal infosphere. This universal infosphere the protosphere, if you will, the first internet. It allowed for instantaneous communication, sharing of data, no matter where you were in the universe. Now it is believed to have started either before the gap or during the gap, and this original network was referred to as the sprawl. The infospheres are cool and all, but you know what else is cool? Hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel so that you can get more Starfinder content. Unfortunately for the sprawl, when the gap happened, it scrambled all of the code that's in the sprawl as a whole. And this is what causes it to be a little bit more fragmented. And also why the fragments of code that can be found in every infosphere are similar or the same. And most post-gap societies have incorporated some form of this code into their infospheres, thus preserving some of the history. Now, one theory that's been put forward about the sprawl is the sheer magnitude of what it was doing and how it was accomplished was that it, while technological, was either powered by a god or was a god in and of itself. And if it was a god in and of itself, the gap may have destroyed it. So what is being inside the infosphere like? Because there are different ways that you can access this. Some would be through actually taking your consciousness into the system. Some access it through virtual reality or augmented reality, and some have the full deep dive experience. It is possible to get sensory input from your digital experience. Much like the regular internet works today, there are subspheres, and these are also known as sites or different places that you can go to. Different mega corporations, businesses, people, all can own spaces within this digital sphere. As one might expect when you're living in a literal dystopia, when you're going to a digital one, the ads aren't that much better. It is possible to be bombarded with ads. It is possible to be bombarded with annoying digital assistants. Hey, hey you Clippy, no, no, fuck you. Go away, sick of your shit. It is possible to improve your viewing experience by purchasing ad blockers. There's even accessibility tools as well as sensory boosters to help you process all the, the sheer amounts of information that are coming your way when you're in the data sphere. It is possible to step on a literal information highway. Now, when personal users want to access the infosphere, there are a limited number of frequencies that they can use. Typically, the regular user is going on to the infosphere to post on social media to share a job or have or companies post jobs it is also possible to share memes of cats but don't let the patrick catch you being so patronizing towards them video games also happen on the infospheres 
Some companies even go so far as to sell digital experiences. Anything you can imagine. Drift Dreamer Travel Agency has been one such company, and they are known to buy memories of adventurers. They offer their elite clientele a super digital deluxe experience. They have huge databases of worlds and memories from different adventurers and explorers. They then sell these memories in these packages back to their clients to experience the same thing. And because it's possible to have sensory experiences when you're going digital, it's not uncommon to have somebody get married to a digital entity because you can make it 18 plus. Loved ones can even be brought back as a digital AI. They can be programmed to function and look exactly like the person that may have departed from this plane of existence. It is also possible to have multiple layers of infospheres. Basically, anyone with enough money can build their own infosphere. Private users can have one. Companies have one. Governments obviously have one. Rebel groups will often have their own encrypted networks as well. Within each of these infospheres, you have different sites. Coworkers who are near each other or work within the same city can access these individual sites. Governments will use this to communicate with their constituents. It would also stand to reason that criminal syndicates would have their own infosphere, a dark sphere maybe. There are many groups that are out there to try and understand the sprawl and the code that's littered throughout all these infospheres. The Starfinder Society is one such group. They have been able to piece together some of these codes and when they implement it into their own infosphere or a specific infosphere, it seems to add different functionality that never was there before. It unlocks a piece of it. It happens a bit like a weapon fusion except for data. Unfortunately, not everything has been good. This also lends a little bit more credibility to the theory that the sprawl itself was a god. These fragments of code sometimes contain corrupted information, corrupted data, and bad things have happened to some groups. One common story that seems to come up through some of these corrupted fragments of code, a very tall, digitally decaying figure has been known to show itself to different people. And this story has been rather consistent on many accounts. And what it's done is it's called to them in their own language. The ones who have ignored it have lived to tell the tale. The ones that have tried to acknowledge and speak to it have lost any sense of sanity that they had. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the Pact Worlds or the playable races of Starfinder, check out these playlists on the screen now. Huge thank you to my brand new patrons this month, Alex and Dove Sunseeds Sword. Thank you for your support. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.